Hi everybody, uh, Joe here. We're gonna make a quick video on um, personal and corporate devices. Some companies would like to completely block personal devices, like personal Windows devices, from uh, accessing Office 365 or any Azure Active Directory uh, resource where you're logging on as your Active Directory uh, account and then you know, hitting that resource, be it something in Office 365, like Exchange or SharePoint, or something you've set up an enterprise app for, maybe, you know, Box, Dropbox, something like that. So how do we uh, do that? Well, the first thing that uh, you'll probably think of is, well, conditional access policies, right? And yes, that that's true. But we're going to do something else uh, on top of that. It's easy enough to make a conditional access policy that uh, uh, makes sure that people are, are on devices that are considered managed devices. I'll have to go over what that means in a second. Um, but even after we do that, uh, some user could make their personal device a managed device. There's really nothing stopping that right out of the gate. Uh, so we're going to talk about how to do that. And we'll talk about how to, do, how to do that from Windows. And then maybe in another video, we'll talk about uh, also doing that for Android and iOS. Because the way we are going to have to do that is through Intune. Now, on my screen right now, I'm showing uh, Intune. Now, this is uh, in my uh, phony baloney uh, tenant. And um, we can see there's uh, some Windows devices in here. <clears throat> That's all good. Uh, so what we have to do, though, is prevent devices from coming into Intune. Why do we have to prevent that? What does that have to do with keeping personal devices completely out of, you know, the Azure Active Directory realm and, and uh, getting to our assets? Well, for that, we kind of have to understand the background of the conditional access policies that do this preventing. So... I uh, won't start here in Intune, even though that was on the screen. We're going to start over with conditional access. I, I do have Azure Active Directory open. I'm on the conditional access blade right now. You can see I don't have any. I'm starting from scratch. Of course, I'd have a few in here automatically uh, to you know uh, force MFA to block legacy authentication, that kind of thing. But we'll start from a, a clean slate here. I'm going to create a new policy. And my goal here is to uh, prevent a personal uh, devices or to block uh, personal devices. So I'll just call it that. I'll say personal Windows devices because I'll be specific uh, to Windows. Now, again, same thing uh, uh, we would always do. We would choose uh, usually all users. And then if there was some, for some reason, some users we wish to exempt from this service accounts or whatever we could go to exclude. Uh, I'll choose all users for now. For cloud apps, the usual thing we would do is choose all cloud apps. Maybe there's some uh, cloud apps that we don't mind people using personal devices for, but we're going to block them entirely. So there's no reason uh, to do that. Conditions. Well, for the conditions here, if we we're going to be specific to Windows, uh, we would actually choose Windows as a device platform. And since I am being specific this time, I'll choose Windows. But if we wanted to block everything, we, we wouldn't have to choose anything at all. So um, we'll leave that selected and move down to the grant. And, and the grant, oh, I forgot to save that because my... My mug is blocking the done button. <laughs> All right, well, I'll leave it right there. So the uh, the grant is where we'll actually uh, uh, get the power here. We have two uh, uh, options that we would choose that I'll explain. Uh, one is require device to be marked as compliant, and the other is require hybrid Azure AD joint device. <clears throat> These two really together mean managed. That means we're managing the device. What does managed mean? That means that we have such control over the device that we can send out settings, we can install apps, you know, we can lock the machine down, we can change the administrator's group on the machine, all that kind of stuff. 
Why do these two mean that? Well, let's talk about hybrid Azure AD join. Hybrid Azure AD join means a device is joined on-premise to Active Directory and through some uh, Azure Active Directory and uh, a magic and Windows magic, it also is joined to Azure AD. So it's a dual joining. But the important part here is that it's joined on-premise. We assume if a device is joined to an on-premise domain that we have full control over it. We certainly have a group policy control over a device that's joined on-premise. Uh, also, we might be using something like uh, the configuration manager or something else, but we have control over it. We make that assumption if it's joined on-premise that we are controlling that device. So that's what hybrid would end up meaning. Now, that's the only kind of join that uh, we can really uh, uh, make this assumption with. Just a straight up Azure Active Directory join device, there's no assumption that that device is being managed. The only way that that device can be managed is via a mobile device management like Intune. And, and we don't assume that just because the device is Azure Active Directory join. It does not have to be in Intune. Which brings us to the other checkbox here. Require device to be marked as compliant. Well, that's how we take care of the Azure Active Directory joined um, uh, option. Devices, in order to be marked as compliant, to be recognized as marked as compliant in Azure Active Directory when it's doing conditional access, those devices must be in Intune. Therefore, we have control over them, right? Um, the only uh, uh, compliance option you have <clears throat> anywhere is in Intune. Device gets into Intune and then it can be evaluated for compliance. The compliance can be very simple uh, uh, if we're you know uh, uh, not too worried about that. We just want to make sure it's managed. We can make it, well, the device has to be Windows 10 version, you know, whatever, uh, <clears throat> 21H1, something like that. So, you know, we can make it very simple or, or it's got a firewall on or it's got uh, antivirus, anti-spy. You have, you know, about half a dozen things you can choose from. So those two things mean the device is managed. It's either being managed on premise in Active Directory or it's being managed in Intune. That makes sure of it. Okay, great, right? Great. The only problem if we just do this, and I'm going to click on uh, Create here, is that once I do that, I'll click on Create. Oops, I forgot to click on Done again because, again, my stupid picture is in front of the Select button. Um, I'm not going to worry about uh, enabling this policy. We, we've created it. The only uh, uh, thing we, uh, the, the only uh, way to get around uh, this and actually mess with it a little bit is if someone actually brought in a personal device, Azure Active Directory joined it, which people who are administrators on their devices are free to do. And when they Azure Active Directory join their device, the automatic flow, if they have an Intune license, and if we've set up Win, uh, uh, Azure Active Directory to allow this, which we have to do, is the device would also go into Intune. And now, boom, they're managed. So now they're on a personal device and it's managed. Well, they're also an administrator on their personal device, right? So they can do things that other people uh, maybe couldn't do that were brought via in via autopilot. And, we brought, bring you in via autopilot, we get to choose it. You're not an administrator. It's a great thing about autopilot. And there's a couple of other methods uh, to do that as well, like bulk and roll. So um, there's various reasons why we don't want personal devices, even if we you know, uh, are, control them. And sure, we could send out a policy that manipulates the uh, local administrators group, but it's just bad form. To, to have to worry about making sure that we've checked every box for a personal device being brought in. We might also have company policies. A lot of companies have policies that just say you don't use personal Windows devices. So how do we keep personal Windows devices from coming in? Well, uh, if a device is joined to Active Directory, we assume all those are corporate devices, right? No one's bringing in a machine <clears throat> and uh, adding that to uh, Active Directory, I mean, they could, but we're, we're, we're assuming that's not gonna happen. Um, what we wanna do is prevent somebody from doing the other scenario, becoming Azure Active Directory joined through the settings or through you know first boot up, and then uh, uh, through that, getting their device into Intune. So what we have to do is block these devices from getting into Intune in the first place. And if we do that, they can never become compliant 
and then they're not going to pass that compliance test. How do we do that? Well, we do it over here in Intune itself or Endpoint Manager. You know, we're everybody that uses it still calls it Intune, no matter what Microsoft tries to do about it. But yes, it's Endpoint Manager. So how do we do it over here? Well, there's something in here called a device enrollment uh, um, uh, policy or profile. And it's kind of weirdly placed. Uh, I always thought it, it, it belongs under tenant administration, but that's not where it is. It's under this devices node, and then it's down towards the bottom. Uh, I have trouble seeing it. It's, it's, it's so weirdly named, but it's this one right here, en Enrollment Device Platform Restrictions. Enrollment Device Platform Restrictions. I'm going to click on that. You can have more than one of these because you, you could have different profiles for different users. Maybe you want certain users to be allowed to have iOS. Android, Windows, you know, different things like that. There's a default policy though, and usually you can just get by with this one default policy. Here it is, it's called all users. Now, all of these up here, um, the, uh, you're, you're, this is not, this doesn't take you to a different place. You, if you have a bunch of um, uh, device restrictions, you might, uh, it, it might be a little too much to see in one place, I guess, so they give you uh, ways to filter out uh, what you're looking at so don't worry about that though i'm going to click on this all users this is for all the device platforms as you'll see here when i click on properties uh android devices ios mac and here's windows devices you can see this is apply applied to all devices by default this is the default one so i'm going to click on edit here and you notice that there is a personally owned option here and i'll block that for windows now I'll click on review and save all right, now we block personal devices, right? But the next question is, what does that mean? How, how, how does uh, Intune decide it's a personal device enrollment and not a you know, corporate device enrollment? Well, uh, Intune uh, uh, has a category of what it considers personal devices. And if you're in this uh, um, option here, this enrollment platform restrictions. There's a little learn more link here. When you click on that, you'd be brought to another screen and you'll find it, but I'll just uh, bring it to you now because I already have it open and I have it scrolled down to the correct place here. Blocking personal Windows devices. Here it just tells us what a personal device is or what Intune considers to be a corporate device. Okay. So the following enrollment methods are authorized for corporate enrollment. So these are not uh, personal devices. Enrolling, uh, uh, the enrolling user is a device enrollment manager. Yeah, uh, we can assign somebody to the device enrollment manager uh, role. And then if that person were to enroll a device on behalf of another user, that's a corporate device. Great. Okay, so people could bring in a device and a device enrollment manager could bring it in. Instead of the original user doing it themselves, the device enrollment manager would do it. It would be marked uh, as, as corporate. Device enrolls through Windows Autopilot. Yep, a lot of people are using Autopilot. If your device is in the Autopilot database, if, if we uh, upload it into that or if a vendor does it for us, then when that device boots up for the first time, uh, the Windows device will call out, find the Autopilot uh, service and say, hey, is there a tenant out there that uh, I belong to? And the service will say, sure enough, there is. And it'll direct that uh, Autopilot device towards the tenant that has registered or uploaded that device's hardware ID. So those uh, coming in that way would be considered uh, a corporate own. And again, in the autopilot uh, profile, we can, uh, one of the great things we can do actually with all these corporate methods is tell the uh, device that uh, this user that's going to log on is just a standard user, not an administrative user. The device is registered with autopilot, but isn't enrolled, blah, blah, blah. It's autopilot again. Device enrolls through bulk provisioning package. Yeah, in Azure Active Directory, you can create something called a bulk provisioning package. It's a, a, a file that has a PPKG extension, and uh, you can send this out to a machine, have people double click on it if you're an administrator on the machine. Uh, it's basically a bunch of Intune settings put into this little package, and when people double click on it, it uh, walks the machine through uh, enrolling and uh, uh, with Intune and also joining Azure Active Directory in a specific way. You can tell the, de you know, the device this user is not an administrator anymore, blah, 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 a bunch of stuff like that. So we control how the device 
is set up before it comes in if we uh, set one of those up. That a lot of times is convenient. Device in the rolls through GPO. Uh, remember we talked about hybrid Azure Active Directory joint. It means a machine is on-premise and then also uh, it gets into the cloud as uh, Azure joined as, uh, as well, but it's called hybrid Azure Active Directory join. Well, how do you, how do, you do that? There's a couple ways to do that uh, to get it hybrid join. That doesn't make it Intune join though. One of the ways is AD Connect. And another way actually is with registry settings, which we can send out through group policies. That'll get it um, hybrid Azure Active Directory uh, join. But once we hybrid Azure Active Directory join a device, we'd probably also like it to be an Intune as well, right? Well, that hybrid join, it does not enroll the device for Intune automatically. That hybrid join doesn't do that for us. Instead, uh, once it's hybrid Azure Active Directory join, we can send out another group policy to that device, telling it to MDM enroll the next time the user logs on. It'll just use that user's account to go right into Intune. Those are also considered corporate devices. All right. So anything other than that is considered a personal device and it would not be allowed to enroll with Intune. Therefore, it could never become compliant and therefore it will be blocked via our conditional access policy. So that in a nutshell is how you would prevent at least Windows personal devices from making their way uh, 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 into our environment and getting access to Azure Active Directory protected resources. So that's it. I uh, hope this uh, video helps you. Uh, send some comments down in the comments below. I know I haven't been on in a while. I've been dealing with uh, a really pain in the neck uh, 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 project that that deals with uh, DLP. And uh, actually, this is one of the components that uh, we put into place, one of the easier things to put into place, as it turns out. So uh, have fun with that. Uh, send me some comments, and I'll talk to you later.